Bonjour. Morning. So my apologies. I don't speak French, despite of understanding. Um, so I'm Wagner, anthropologist, uh, been dedicating my time um, since 2005, six, studying the LGBT sports and the tournaments. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, thank the French Federation for uh, uh, this opportunity to e express my ideas here, and originally from, uh, for the, the invitation from Christelle and, and Mark in Frankfurt in March this year. Yeah? Well, uh, so I prepared a text here, and I will try to um, read carefully and then slow, slowly, <laughs> just to uh, guarantee that everyone will understand. Yeah? My, my comments are um, very uh, ordinary, I mean, in the literature about uh, LGBT sports tournament. Uh, but my proposal at the end, it's a little bit radical. Uh, and I hope that we can discuss um, these ideas and <coughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> well, before beginning my talk, I would like to contextualize the background which has brought me here today. I'm Latin American, born in a country in South America, I'm gay, and my parents belong to working class. I became a researcher because there are good public universities in my country, and by public, I mean that not only students don't have to pay this study, but also may get scholarships and other types of financial support to get the degree. My perspective is thus one of a person who belongs to the line below the Ecuador, a place where gays, lesbians, transvestites, and other individuals have to face a daily fight for survive in a violent and unfair society that doesn't uh, respect human rights, a place where LGBT sports do not exist as an, uh, as an institutionalized practice. That having been said, the aim of my talk, my talk, this talk today is to share some critical uh, thoughts about a topic I have been studying for years, namely the sports environment for gays, lesbians, transgenders, travestites, transsexuals, intersex, and queers. Beyond the mere position and categorization, it's known that LGBT sports privilege cloned bodies of heteronormative male and female genders, that is, those who are not closer to the, quote, normalized gays and lesbians, quote, or heterosexual models of men and women, the other, queer, weird, aberrant, are relegated to the outside the mainstream. Gays and lesbians, in so much as they are models of homonormativity, are partly responsible for the maintenance of homophobia in society, and in conventional sports or LGBT by extension. In a conference during out games in Vancouver this year, July, last July, researcher Pat Briefing said that the inclusion of transgender athletes is the next step of LGBT sports movement agenda. We only have to take a quick talk, uh, walk around sports facilities in international competitions to realize that how invisible transgender people are. And places are also inexistent for them, except for a few improvised restrooms during some sports competitions. In general, there are no adequate restrooms, sorry, changing rooms or restrooms for transgender individuals. Judy Halberstam claims that there is a real problem related to transgender restrooms and spaces, which is why she goes on uh, to say that, quote, it's crucial that we acknowledge the fact that the restrooms problem is much more than a phallus in a gender segregation machinery. It's the best described as a violent application of our gender system, quote. 
My, the transgender issue is just one among many issues that I highlight in this talk so as, uh, as to make a critical appraisal of LGBT sports in relation to their actors, logic, merit, and flaws. History tells us that it all began in the early 80s when uh, Olympic decathlete Tony Waddell decided to create a, stru uh, a structure for competitions which include gays, lesbians, bisexuals, and also heterosexuals in a borderless world, of, uh, world for sports, thus showing that minorities could also be part and express themselves in orthodox social institutions. Thus, gay games started as an alternative sports event but gradually gained a larger dimension. However, the project became too exclusive along the years, thus inviting criticism and rising voices for the interconnection of culture, human rights, and sports to understand the complexity of subjects in the contemporary world, linking the themes as, uh, so as to look at the human being as more in a more holistic way. Out games were created as a distinct possibility of know-how. A conference of human rights prior to the sports competitions accepted uh, as the supposed answer to the failed model, quote, which emphasized the binomial sports competition. However, from my ethnography, ethnographic observations in competitions which, uh, with the gay games format, Chicago 2006 and Cologne 2010, and out games format, Copenhagen 2009 and Vancouver 2011, coupled with my critical reading, the following can be observed. The environment of LGBT sports competitions is still dominated by gay men, white, wealthy, wealthy educated urban consumers who establish an exclusive world, and I called ghetto, gay ghetto, to, uh, to use the Martin Levine's terms, who use the competition as a stage, they use the competition as a stage of circuit of parties, which encompasses gay parades and sex, sexual tourism, reproducing the hierarchy known as masculinity of the old patriarchate classified by Robert Cono. In that sense, lesbians, transvestites, transgenders, intersex, cross-dressers, and queers do not stand a chance and are made invisible. When we think about Judith Butler and, and Julia Kristeva, we see these masculinities and femininities as dissonant, wrong, deviate, and abject. These are subjected bodies which are place, placed and also place themselves outside the mainstream. Not always lost, not always lost, though, after the all they get status by being exotic and are still desired for sex. My irony. Gay games have been organized for almost 30 years and now uh, are consolidated as mega event mega sport event due to the great number of participants. If we compare the number of registered athletes of Summer Olympic and Paralympic Games, the number of LGBT athletes is no doubt larger. Yet, despite the significant number of registered participants, LGBT competitions lie outside the criteria which legitimize such events as mega events, be it because they don't appeal to spectators or because they attract little popularity and as such raise inexpressive sponsorships and manage insignificant amounts of money, among other reasons. The fact that every time the gay games return to a place in the US territory suggests, by my opinion, a control policy exercised by the Federation of Gay Games and so as the, to guarantee the high performance, which is so characteristic of sport events. Out games, on the other hand, offer a seemingly distinct formula, a LGBT human rights conference, a cultural festival, and, classic, and a classic sport event. Yet what should be an alternative model becomes a clone of it or of itself, 
given the actions of its subjects and agreements of organizers. The way I see it, the conference is not a discussion forum only for intellectuals or LGBT people who have been persecuted or sexually, politically exiled and who were brought to the discussion through an, an outreach program. It should be a space for critical thinking and discussion, not only of political themes, themes of minorities, but also for those who, who uh, which directly address all LGBTIQ subjects who live in society and who by chance practice sports. Athletes should take part in the conference and the conference speakers or participants should take part in the sports modalities, watching, cheering, practicing, which take place prior to and after the conference. We do not usually see athletes who are directly affected by homophobia day by day discussing the issue, this issue in the conference, for example. Nor do we see those who are discussing such issues practicing sport and cases. In cases when they are some overlapping are rare. What is more worrying is that available models for sports practice end up with a list of uncritical and alienate fans. We see more and more new actors in sports competitions such as gay games and word out games. They are Latin Americans, Africans, Central and South Asians, and Polynesians who came to such games to reproduce and to consume what was before inaccessible for them. Subject athletes who belong to, can to countries which little or no tradition LGBT sports and who also want to consume such a sport and spend their, quote, pink money at the parties on the, sex, uh, on the circuit of sex and tourism some of whom who come out during these games, others who request political asylum and migrate. Thus, what we are discussing here today is, not, is much more than just the new forms of LGBT sports management. We are dis addressing issues of political awareness, migration process, LGBT citizenship, and human rights, which may enable access to sports and leisure practice in a critical, non-alienate way. My ethnographic experience through LGBT sports competitions pointed to a um, distinguishing feature which brought the light non-identifiable elements that are visible in order uh, com uh, conventional sports events I took part in, for example, Olympic and Paralympic events. Um, for many queer subjects, for example, the sex variable plays a role and determines the choice to participate in those competitions. Other variables can be added to the aforementioned picture are drugs, whether list or not, tourism, often in secret bars and clubs for sex offered by the city and its ghettos, the space of positive reinforcement by, of identities, conceptions and, and ideologies of ex exclusion. The phenomenon of a ghetto formation for sex practice and LGBT sports environment is an important element to be analyzed. At the first glance, sex and, or sexual practice, practice could play a subversive role in sports. Given the energy economy ideology for maximum sports performance, LGBT sports could offer an alternative which could place side by side two facets that are seemingly unthinkable of being together in conventional sports, for example, sex and desires. Yet sex would have to, to be assumed as part of the structuring logic of the events. The sexual practice of Olympic and Paralympic Games are far from the spotlight of sports training, supervision and coaching. Pleasure is totally downgraded by performance in sports events. In, in the actual, actual world sports scenario, the general liberaliz liberalization of uh, sexual practice in large hotel rooms, sport, uh, sports changing rooms between heterosexual and homosexual athletes is unthinkable. On the other hand, the use of hormones, testosterone or G, 
one, for example, and body sculptures are imply used by queer participants. Both in modalities such as swimming and athletics, which in gender, individual athletics performances are more, uh, and are more uh, subject to six results. Um, and in modalities such as bodybuilding or powerlifting, for example. What is both uh, paradoxical and comic is the fact that instead of offering sports alternatives for those who consume this substance, which could also be challenging for a structure with larger control such as WADA, the competition organizing committees such as FGG or GLISA gradually have more control implementing or try to have more control, implementing anti-doping and punishment policies for participants. The proposal led out by Claudio uh, Tamburini and the the Torbjörn Tensjö, two researchers from Sweden, is to create the Soccer Bio Amazon, gener genetically modified super athletes to minimize gender difference to share benefits of professionalism both in soccer and other sports in general. Could let us, this proposal could let us to think that a radicalization of relative policies for the consumption of body sculpture or performance increase substance in sports systems, not only LGBT, but also worldwide. That could cause a true revolution in the way of the global sports system operates. If the gay games and out games models presuppose the interrelation of sport, parties, and sex, despite of the fact that this aspect is not institutionally recognized, then it must be differential, subversive, and set forth as eccentric, disruptive, and non-conventional sport practice. But the cross of the matter against our development is that both models seek legitimation for their existences. Legitimation of sport practice inside the global sport system, basically addressed by the Olympics. It's interesting to note that devotion uh, LGBT sports have for a structure of gender oppression, such as sports, and their model endorsed by the patriarchal system. One, pos one possible answer for LGBT sport is the practical application of the concept of queer in the context, highlighted by the critical queer theory by various authors. That implies subverting the context challenging giving structures such uh, which guide actions and promote, sorry, change. Let us recall the eccentric practice, for example, identified in a small, ca in a small case in, univer in a university tournaments in, by the Brazilian anthropologist Carlos Costa. It's the youth games, uh, they are the youth games uh, they played, for example, four for a hundred uh, without clothes, and uh, an event called Maratoma. It's a kind of marathon of beer. Of course, this is just for fun, but it's a kind of uh, um, example of eccentric practice, what I called eccentric practice in sport. Although such forms are not part of those forms which take place in the development of uh, conventional sports, such creative, creative maneuvers promote a space subversion, challenge universal laws of context, in this case the rules. They are not submit all the time to the reproduction, reproduction of the perfect at athletic gesture, as we see by extension in our LGBT competitions. As, we, uh, as a way to conclude, I propose to be uh, reading the Greek myth of Narcissus to make an analogy between the conventional Olympism and the LGBT sports competition. Narcissus, at the age of 16, drew near a stream and gave rise to the course imposed to him by the gods and foreseen by the living Tiresias to know his beauty in the reflection of the crystal waters thus becoming obsessed by his reflection and consuming himself in the vain attempt to capture and reflection. Just as Narcissus succumbed before his own image reflecting the water, 
because it was so beautiful and as such unreachable, the LGBT competition surrendered to the Olympian image they see in the mirror of illusions. Such competition set an image of perfect model for sports events, be it for its fake dimension to, of tolerance and diversity, or uh, the thought or unreal social inclusion of others, or still for the establishment of supposedly free zones, freedom zones, or free zones, which are nothing but self built sexual ghettos or uh, auto-constructed ghettos. Instead of looking for their own reference and ex execution models for sport events, they submit to uh, the infinitive infinitely easier and painless process of coping ways of doing. The result for our narcissus tends to be tragic, although the same will not hold true for its mage, which, as such, will remain idyllic and uh, unachievable. For narcissus, the link to a pre-existing heteronormative, the sexist, macho, and homophobic model will eventually prevent one of two possibilities, the bankruptcy, and disintegration of a model, or the, perp the perpetual search in the desert of uh, everlasting marriages. How would you like to believe in the vanguard of the LGBT sports events movement? And, uh, and so I suggest it's time to rethink the models of doing LGBT sports competitions, be it rethinking its formats, reassessing its philosophy, and building goals, or just raising the critical consciousness of its participants. Perhaps we could have won queer games instead of gay or odd games, restarting the process from the beginning of searching for new ways and possibilities. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'll speak in English. Uh, um, thank you, Wagner. Yeah, okay, I'll try to do this in short sentences here. So you're speaking English and yes. doing French. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. okay. Try not to make this too long. Um, thank you, Wagner. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say that I think the as far as gay games and out games are concerned, it's open to everyone. All you have to do is register if you want to participate, or you can volunteer, or you can be a spectator. Donc, euh, elle précise que les gay games comme les out games sont ouverts à tous. Euh, on peut s'inscrire, on peut participer et on peut être spectateur. Um, in terms of showing uh, la différence, um, at the opening ceremony and the closing ceremonies, there's ample opportunity to be exotic and eccentric. Et par exemple, les cérémonies d'ouverture comme de clôture euh, offrent largement la possibilité pour montrer sa différence, exo exotisme ou autre. And um, I have to say, since being since 1998, when I first was involved in the gay games, this is I've never heard the words gay games, sex, and parties used so often uh, in a period of uh, 20 minutes. Et c'est la première fois depuis 1998 quand elle a commencé à s'engager aux gay games qu'elle entend les mots « gay games »,« sex » et « fête » employés si souvent en si peu de temps. I think we can probably agree that sex and parties occur all the time, not just during events. Les, le sexe et les fêtes arrivent à tout moment et pas, pas exclusivement pendant des événements sportifs ou autres. And uh, speaking for the gay games, and I think Mark has been present at some of these discussions, um, there are actually documents, um, how can I say this, Uh, saying that uh, parties, uh, which is implies sex, I suppose, for some people, uh, are, are not part of the event, that they are, have nothing to do with the event. Au niveau de l'organisation, les fêtes n'en font pas partie. Hein. Ensuite, il peut y en avoir, mais les fêtes, euh, entre guillemets, sex. So, uh, and regarding uh, bidders, bidders and the point of um, something to do with America, North America, in the... Uh, in terms of bidders, bidders for the gay games, oh, bidders, bidders, bidders for the gay games, and just uh, what comes to mind, there have been bidders from Johannesburg, Sydney, Vancouver, Amsterdam, Cologne, and Gay Paris, 
And um, it is, as I say, the market that decides. It has nothing to do with the Federation or the people who even vote. It is the bidders themselves who decide if they wish to bid for the gay games, and it is the members who vote. Et donc les villes qui se proposent pour accueillir les, les jeux, les gay games, euh, vous avez souvent suivi la liste que j'ai pas notée, mais bon, Johannesburg, Johannesburg, Sydney, Bourg, Vancouver, Amsterdam, Cologne, Paris. Voilà. Et euh, donc ces, ces villes qui décident d'elles-mêmes si elles veulent se proposer comme candidates, et, et ce n'est pas les, la fédération qui suscite les, les candidatures. And there was even an incident uh, where the city of Cape Town and our friends in Cape Town, South Africa, decided not to bid. And that was their decision, and they felt that uh, it was not their time, but it was their decision. Et la ville du Cap, je crois, en Afrique du Sud, s'est décidé qu'il était trop tôt euh, pour elle. Et elle préférait ne pas se proposer parce que ça. Enfin, je ne sais pas pourquoi. Mais elles ont décidé de ne pas le faire. Et la, la ville n'était pas mûre pour le faire, je crois. Um, and regarding, uh, you know, I think it's a good point that uh, athletes should attend conferences. It would be nice if athletes attended conferences and non-athletes attended sporting events. I think it's a question of timing uh, and of resources and sometimes of money. But um, I know when I do my sport, um, at the end of the day, I'm so exhausted, I, you know, skip the parties and anything else, uh, and, and the conferences. But you know, if, the, if the conferences are before the event, the sporting event, or after the event, in terms of days, then yes, one can attend. Je reconnais qu'il serait bien que les athlètes participent aux conférences et les conférenciers euh, aux événements sportifs. Euh, parfois, c'est un problème de temps, de planning. Euh, même quand elle est fatiguée après un événement, elle ne va pas aller après une conférence. Peut-être si la conférence est avant. C'est une question de disponibilité et on ne peut pas être partout. Merci. The question is, I don't agree. <laughs> C'est plutôt une réponse <laughs> à son. Thank you for the comments. Sa présentation qu'une question. question. We'll do the same. Uh, yes, I know. Donc la question c'est, est-ce qu'il était au courant de tout ça? This could be a, a, a really long discussion, <laughs> but it, I'll keep it short. Maybe focus on two things. Uh, one is gay games, out games, Euro games, tip, uh, all these sports events are not organized in the context of the structure of international, national sport. Donc, tous ces événements, gay games, out games, etc., sont euh, organisés en dehors de la structure du sport international. That means that they are market events. They're privately funded, and it's the participants who are making the decisions, and they have expectations. Et ça dépend donc du marché. C'est ceux qui participent, qui subventionnent, et qui ont des attentes. So there are limits to what the organizer can do. Et donc l'organisation est, est limitée. Il faut répondre aux attentes des participants. Similarly, we don't have the power to say to a city, the FTG, for example, build us a stadium that will be suitable for LGBTQ, QIQ, 1Q, QIQ, uh, all the varieties of people who might identify themselves. We're not going to build them, each of them, a separate locker room to change. Et on n'a pas la possibilité de demander aux villes hautes de construire un stade avec des vestiaires spécifiques Enfin, vous avez suivi LGBT, EQ, etc. So, we're working within the system. For us, for example, with regard to trans people, our priority is that people are able to com compete in the gender of their choice, recognizing that the world of sport is organized according to male and female sport. That's the way it is. We can push a little bit, but that's the reality. We can push for mixed sport, which is probably a good solution in many cases. But fundamentally for us, the T, you're talking, you talk about transgender people, it's more important that they be able to compete in the, the gender of their choice and that whatever the locker room, they don't face uh, violence, discrimination, insults, or rejection. Et donc pour nous, la priorité serait pas... Um des toilettes ou des vestiaires spécifiques, mais que les personnes transgenres puissent euh, participer dans le genre de leur choix. Et euh, quel que soit le vestiaire où ils se trouvent, 
qui puisse être dans une ambiance non violente, sans menace, etc. Donc, euh, parce qu'il faut reconnaître que la, le monde sportif est assez divisé par le genre. La plupart des compétitions se font ou hommes ou femmes. Et donc, euh, les gay games, etc., essaient de, de trouver un, une sorte de compromis. Il y a peut-être aussi la possibilité de faire des compétitions mixtes, mais à l'intérieur d'une structure existante de, du sport euh, genré, on essaie de créer une espèce de sécurité. C'est ça la priorité. Uh, just to speak about the human rights. Um, out Games, the choice for a human rights conference was probably more of a marketing choice. And it doesn't recognize that the first element of human rights in LGBT sports competitions is that there is an LGBT sports competition. It's probably much more important that there be one gay athlete there than 5,000 people sitting in a room here uh, talking among themselves. Donc, à propos des conférences euh, sur les droits civiques, euh, d'abord, c'est un choix marketing. Est-ce qu'on peut se le permettre financièrement Et surtout, question euh, droits civiques, pour nous, la priorité, c'est que que les gay games existent est déjà un pas énorme vers les droits civiques. Le plus important, c'est qu'un athlète puisse participer de façon out. Euh, ça, pour nous, enfin pour lui, est, est plus important que n'importe quelle conférence ou qui puisse se faire ailleurs en dehors d'un événement sportif. Uh, with regard to Olympics and established sport, um, you either have to choose to be in or out of that model. And The, what's the best way to work? I think it's to be in while retaining your differences. The reality is that there are tens of thousands, thousands, tens of thousands of people in LGBT sport. There are millions of LGBT athletes in mainstream sport. If we want to help those people, which is our role too, We have to be in a position where we're at least in a position to talk with mainstream sport. Le choix des gay games a été de, effectivement de suivre le modèle des, des JO ou d'autres compétitions euh, sportives pour justement pouvoir euh, ouvrir une porte vers les athlètes gays qui participent dans le sport euh, généraliste et leur, leur donner quelque chose ou qui peut être comparable, mais où ils peuvent se permettre d'être out. Et, et il faut quand même... C'est un choix où on suit le modèle, où on est complètement en dehors. Mais le, le, le but du Gay Game, c'est de créer un modèle où un athlète puisse participer sérieusement, tout en apportant la possibilité de, de, de faire sa sortie. Alors... Just But short you comments. You want to, to answer, Wagner Just short comments. Yes, yeah. and after we have really quick... Uh, three questions, may really, really quick, please. And uh, okay, okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you, Amy. Yeah. So, to Mark, I think this last point is very important. I mean, to dialogue with the the system, but we uh, don't necessarily uh, need to be in the system. I mean, yeah, it's a long discussion. Yeah, but this. What you said about reproducing the system, female and male categories, for example, divisions, I don't agree with that. Yeah. I, I used to be an athlete for six years in track and field, and I still uh, be an athlete. I'm, I'm an athlete. I'm running, but not officially in events. And among, for example, the, the, the Mexicans in some, some competitions or the Polynesians, Indonesians, and... Donc, son dernier point est important. Effectivement, il est important de dialoguer avec les systèmes sportifs non gays, mais on a un choix de la manière de le faire. Et euh, donc, évidemment, ils ne sont pas d'accord sur la manière. Et donc, il a commencé à expliquer que lui-même, il fait du sport, il court, mais pas de façon officielle. Et puis, par rapport aux Mexicains et aux Polynésiens, on va poursuivre. So among these athletes, Mexicans, Polynesians, Indonesians, and so on, it, and, and, and these athletes are not uh, generally not white. This Caucasian that we know, the reality is very different. 
yeah. parmi les sportifs non blancs, en général les Mexicains, les Polynésiens, euh, la réalité est complètement autre. They could be could be desired by her exotic bodies, but they are ex uh, totally excluded excluded from the the participation with white Caucasian athletes or Europeans in general. I mean, Western Europeans in general. This is my a lot of factors. Euh, donc, euh, son vécu, c'est que les, les Mexicains et les Polynésiens peuvent être, désirés, peuvent être des objets de désir, mais qui sont autrement exclus. Et il peut y avoir différentes raisons pour cela. Je pense que c'est... Je ne suis pas contre... Je ne dis pas que le sexe est dans l'organisation de l'organisation, institutionnellement, mais ça se passe. Et c'est un élément important pour mon for my quote. Radical propose to change the system. Yeah. Donc, je n'ai pas dit que je suis contre les sexes à l'intérieur de l'institution, mais euh, ça peut être un problème qui fait partie de sa, son point de vue plus radical sur l'organisation. Je vais continuer à parler une autre fois. On peut poursuivre plus tard. J'ai deux questions courtes. Je suis moi-même un researcher, donc je voudrais. Ma première question est une question de méthode. And as, uh, I'm also a woman, as you perhaps notice it. So my, my, what I, I think is missing in your study, as far as I know, about the methodology that you are, uh, have been using, is the point of view of, of women that are participating to these events. Uh, because you say less gay, more queer. I will perhaps say less gay, more lesbian in this type of events. And so perhaps you have some answer how to increase the participation of women in such events. So, And perhaps it could help to address some of the questions at the end differently than the way you did it. So that's my first point. And my second point uh, is I'm going back to the, this uh, gay games, out games debate. I do not agree with the FJG representative here. And I would have a more uh, scientist approach to this type of uh, question and debates, I think. Uh, one of the difference from my perspective between the gay games and uh, out games is not necessarily having human rights or anything. It's a, a question, and that's a question for you. Is it a question of the different approach of political action for uh, gay and lesbian activists in sport between US and the European perspective? And for myself, I've been, I've been, been living in the US for a few years ago as a student and, uh, and now participating in Europe to uh, LGBT sport movement. I think there are some different of approach in political action among LGBT sport activists. Donc j'ai deux questions. La première, euh, la première question porte, euh, pour aller au-delà de ces questions de gay euh, queer, en fait, c'est la question de la participation des femmes dans les, dans les événements, les compétitions sportives LGBT internationales. Puis, et donc, euh, je pense que s'interroger sur, euh, justement, ce, cette question de la participation des femmes permettrait peut-être d'aller au-delà euh, de, de certaines questions euh, qui sont posées par euh, Wagner. Euh, là. Et le deuxième point sur le débat gay games, out games, euh, bon, j'ai dit que je n'étais pas tout à fait d'accord avec FGG et puis peut-être aussi avec certaines remarques de, de Wagner. La question que je me posais en tant que... Enfin, je suis aussi chercheur, donc euh, c'est plutôt... Euh, et j'ai aussi euh, été passé pas mal de temps aux états unis et puis maintenant, je, je, donc je suis un petit peu activiste aussi dans le sport LGBT euh, européen. La question, est-ce que c'est pas plutôt une différence de, de, de réflexion sur la manière de, de penser l'action la, politique dans le sport LGBT entre la, les états unis et puis l'Europe et ça permettrait peut-être de rendre ces débats moins émotionnels. So, um, just a short comment for the first point, um, to increase the participation of male athletes in international sport competition. Um, this is a, a political battle, I think, uh, uh, to nowadays, for instance in Brazil, because I've seen the, all the Uh, LGBT movement in this direction. But about the sport, I think the, in sport, we reproduce the, <coughs> we reproduce the, the, this uh, conventional system. I mean, uh, the human, uh, human in general are in sports in the last uh, 15 years, I think. 
So it's the same in the LGBT sport, I think. I, I think this is the, the challenge, our challenge. Our, yeah. Donc, par rapport à l'augmentation de, de la participation de, des femmes, euh, bah, malheureusement, je pense que le sport LGBT reflète le sport généraliste, c'est-à-dire qu'il y a plus d'hommes qui, qui font du sport, en tout cas depuis, enfin, dans les 50 dernières années. As a teacher of physical education, I think, I myself, I mean, I consider that this starts at school. En tant example. que prof de, de sport, justement, euh, je pense qu'il faut commencer très jeune. Il faut commencer cette, cette lutte, cet changement euh, dès l'école. But this is a more uh, detailed and problem and very complex, I think. Mais bon, la question va au-delà de notre contexte. 